Hey guys, what we're going to do now is check out some concepts that are going to be important for your success in Chapter 3. So this is the Chapter 3 Lab. So first thing we're going to look at is converting fractions to mixed numbers. I believe in my previous video on the Geometry in Chapter 2 Lab assignment, we looked at converting mixed numbers to fractions. Well, let's go the other way. Let's just convert a fraction to a mixed number. So if I have a fraction like 7 over 6, and I want to convert that to a mixed number, really all I'm doing is dividing it out. I'm dividing 6 into 7. It goes once with a remainder of 1. So 7, 6 would be 1 and 1 over 6. And you could check your work by multiplying 6 times 1 and then adding 1, and that would give us 7. So we're just going to do a simple division here. 2 into 15 would go how many times? I would say probably 7. That would give me 14 with a remainder of 1. So what I would have would be 7 and 1 over 7.5. So I'm not sure if you'll have to, but if it comes up where you have to convert a fraction to a mixed number, that's how you would do it. There may be some cases where you have to simplify a fraction. And in simplifying fractions, all we want to do is see what they have in common, if they do have something in common, and divide that out. So looking at 6 and 42, I would take those and see if they have anything in common. And I notice that they both have a 2 in common. I could divide them by 2, but I could go higher than that. They both have a 6 in common. So if I divide the top and the bottom by 6, I would get a reduced or a simplified fraction of 1 over 7. Do the same thing with 18 over 27. What do you see that they have in common? Well, I know that they're both multiples of 9, so I would try dividing those by 9 first. So 18 divided by 9 would give me, what, 2? And 27 divided by 9 would be 3. So the simplified version of 18 over 27 would be 2 thirds. Okay, let's check out another one. Yeah, another concept we're going to look at is adding and subtracting fractions when they have the same denominator. This is the easiest way or the easiest type of problem to work when you're adding or subtracting. So let's just remember the rule when we're adding or subtracting, subtracting fractions. When the denominators are the same, which is nice, all we need to do is add or subtract the numerators and put that over the common denominator. So the common denominator is 5. I'm just going to take the 2 and subtract the 7 from it. So 2 minus 7 over 5 would be negative 5 over 5, which would turn out to be just a negative 1. Similarly, I could add fractions with the same denominator. I would have 4 plus 5 over the common denominator of 19, so we'd be looking at 9 over 19. Just recalling some of these facts that you may have forgotten about. Now, if I'm going to multiply or divide decimal values, I am just going to pull out my calculator and find those values. So you do that. Pull out your calculator, find those values. So you should get the values on your calculator that you see on my screen. Let's check out this next important concept, and it is converting decimals to percents or fractions to decimals to percents. We'll do a lot of work with that in Chapter 3. When I cover this in my class, I call it the Dr. Pepper rule. Usually when people are drinking a Dr. Pepper, or if they want a Dr. Pepper, they say, hey, just give me a DP. 
Well, D in this case represents decimals and P represents percents. But it just kind of makes it easy to remember if I have to convert between decimals and percents, just remember the Dr. Pepper rule. Okay, so here's how it works. It works in both directions. So if, uh, assuming that D represents decimal and P represents percent, if I have, a, let's just say right there, I'm going to put a decimal point. If I need to go from a percent format to a decimal format, I'm going from P to the D, I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the left. If I'm going from a decimal value and I want it in a percentage format, then I would move my decimal two places to the right. Makes it really easy to remember what direction you move that decimal point when you're converting from either percent to decimal, two to the left, or decimal to percent, two to the right. So we're going to use this Dr. Pepper rule in some conversions on the next page. So let's use that. All right, first thing we need to do, we've got a, per, we've got a fraction and we would like to take that fraction and write it as a percentage. What am I gonna do first? Well, first I need to take that fraction and convert it to a decimal. Then I'm gonna use the Dr. Pepper rule to convert that decimal to a percent. So first pull out the old calculator and I'm gonna take two divided by 13. So two divided by 13 gives me, whoa, that's a really long number. So then let's decide to go to, hmm, how about three decimal places? So 0.153, I'm gonna round it to three decimal places. And so that eight says I need to round that three up to four. So we're gonna call this 0.154, okay. 0 0.154. So there is the decimal equivalent of two thirds. That's in a decimal format. Let's change it to a percentage by using the Dr. Pepper rule. So I want to go decimal to percent, decimal to percent. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. So DP, if I'm going decimal to percent, I'm going to move it two places to the right. So I'm gonna take that decimal point, move him two places to the right, put him right there, which gives me 15.4%. So convert the fraction to a decimal and then take that decimal, use the Dr. Pepper rule, convert it to a percent. So if I divided one by 10, I mean, we kind of know what that is, but let's do it. We get 0 0.1. Okay, so as a decimal, whoops, let me go back to blue. We get 0 0.1. Now I want to use my Dr. Pepper rule and convert that decimal to a percent. So what do I do to convert a decimal to a percent? I move it two places to the right. One, two. So I'm going to have to add a zero there. Well, 1 over 10 is 0 0.10, which is the same thing as 10%. You might have known that, but if you didn't, this is an easy way to convert. So here's some that start off as decimals instead of starting off as fractions like the previous example. These are starting off as decimals, and we want to convert those decimals to percents. So the good old Dr. Pepper rule says if I want to go decimal to percent, I move it two places to the right, D to P. So I'm going to move it two places to the right. So that decimal is actually 135%. So 1.35 is equal to 135%. 0 0.27, what's that going to be? 27%. And what about 4.0? Two places to the right gives me 400%.
Now let's go the other way around. We're going to convert percentages to decimals. If there is not a decimal listed or shown in your problem, then you have to assume it's at the end. Like 240% is 240 with a decimal, 0.0%. And the Dr. Pepper rule says if I want to go from a percentage to a decimal, I move it two places to the left. So let's move that guy two places to the left. And the decimal equivalent of 240% would be what? 2.4 or 2.40. So I'm given the percent symbol. So to move to change that percentage to a decimal, I'm going to move it two places to the left. So find the decimal, move it two places to the left. So 75% would be 0 0.75. Or you could just write it as 0 0.75. 42.5% is 5 as a decimal would be 0.425 or 0 0.425. Dr. Pepper rule, keep that one in your back pocket and use it when you have to do these types of conversions. So let's review the last concept necessary for success in chapter three. This concept is multiplying and dividing numbers that are in scientific notation. This we need to recall some of our work with exponents. Some of the exponents rule that we've seen in the past, such as if I have x to let's say the fifth power and I'm multiplying that by x to the third power, what do you do with those exponents? Do you remember? We add them. So x to the fifth times x to the third would be x to the five plus three. So that would be x to the eighth. Well, it doesn't matter if we have x's or tens. If I had 10 to the fifth times 10 to the third, that would just be 10 to the eighth. What if I had, let's say, 10 to the negative seven times 10 to the fourth. We're just going to add exponents, but in this case, since one of them's negative, it's going to be a negative 7 plus 4, which would be, which would result in a negative exponent, 10 to the negative 3. So thinking about that rule for exponents, let's look at how we're going to multiply and divide. So we're going to start off by multiplying the two front numbers together, I'm going to rearrange it. The two front numbers are going to go together, and then the two last pieces get multiplied together. So when I rearrange this, I'm going to have the 3 times the 5.21 on its own. Then I'm going to do the 10 to the 4th times the 10 to the 2nd. I know that's a lot of times going on here. Let me put a big X in the middle here. Ooh, let's see, right there. Okay, so I got my first part, got my second part. Let's work on those. So 3 times 5.21. Well, I'm going to go to my calculator and do 3 times 5.21. What does that give me? 15.63. So I get a 15. 0.63 up front, then the second part, 10 to the 4th times 10 to the 2nd, when I add my exponents, I get 10 to the 6th. Let me pause this and clean that up a little bit. I had to clean that problem up to give me a little more room. Okay, so we multiply the numbers in front together, we multiply the tens together, we end up with 15.63 times 10 to the sixth. But this format is not proper scientific notation. Remember in scientific notation, eh, I want something a little bit brighter than that. This number in front, in this case the 15.63, has to be a number between 
uh, 0 and 10, and that number is bigger than 10. So in proper scientific notation, I would need to move that decimal point to the left one. So I get a number between 0 and 10. So the 15.63 would need to be 1.563 to be in proper notation. But since I moved the decimal place, that exponent on the 10 to the 6 needs to increase by 1. So it would be 1.563 times 10 to the 7. Be careful with that. Now, I'm looking at my next example, and it's this exact same example. So I didn't change it any. Hmm. Oh, well, we'll just do this. We'll say, hey, it's the same. Okay, so let's look at the division. And actually, let me erase what I have here. Oh, I got some little dots in there. Let me get rid of them. Okay, so let's check out the division. I'm going to set this up as 3 times... 10 to the negative 7, and we're dividing that, so I'm just going to draw a big division. We're dividing that by 5.21 times 10 to the second power. So let's set the division up that way as a division problem. And what we'll do is we will just divide each individual piece. All right, so I'm going to take the 3 and divide it by the 5.21, then I'm going to take the 10 to the negative 7 and divide that by 10 to the second. So we'll do each piece individually, but we're dividing now. So let's divide the 3 by 5.21. So we get this really long decimal, and let's just do three decimal places again. So, it's 0. 0.57581. I want three decimal places, so I want it to stop at the 5 in 0. 0.575. So, that 5 in that position is going to be bumped up one because the number behind it is greater than 5. So, 0. 0.575 will become 0. 0.576. Okay, so in dividing those, I get 0. 0.576. So 0 0.576. Okay, now how are you going to work with those exponents? Remember in division, you have to subtract exponents. So my exponent on 10 is going to be the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So it'll be negative 7 minus 2. See what that looks like. So I've got 0 0.567 up front times 10 to, what's that power going to be? Well, a negative 7 and a negative 2, those guys give me a 10 to the, what? Negative 9 power. As I look at this answer, the number up front, 0 0.576, is not in proper scientific notation. Remember, it needs to be a number between, I keep saying between 0 and 10, but it has to be a number between 1 and 10. Greater than 1, less than 10. So 0 0.0576 is not the correct format for the number in front, I need to move that decimal one to the right, so I have 5.76. So that needs to be 5.76. That is proper notation or scientific notation. Now, that means I have to do something to my exponent. Think about what needs to be done. I'm going to have to do something with a 1 because I moved it one spot. I moved it one decimal place. So the question is, do I add 1 or do I subtract 1? 
since I am moving that decimal place to the right one to get 5.76, I need to subtract one from the exponent to have this in proper notation. So it'll be 5.76 times 10 to the negative 10 power. Notice up here in the previous example, the 15.63, I had to move the decimal place one to the left, so I had to add one to my exponent on 10. Here I'm moving it one decimal place to the right, so I'm having to subtract one. I hope this is helpful. Please email me if you have any questions.